I'm a very take life by the horn situation. That's me, you know. So I'm like, yeah, if I'm going to learn it, I'm going to watch once and then I need to get in and do it. I very much took that as how I was going to run my training and my trainer was the same. She said, yep, go for it. She was right beside me for the first day or two until she felt that I was like, that I needed to then have a go on my own. So she'd just step outside the door. She's still within earshot. She's still within sight of me. She kind of just let me go and learn how to do things myself. And I I asked questions and she helped. I had her double check at the end to make sure the groom was all nice. And yeah, it was really great. So I think some people need to watch a bit longer and that's available to you. Some people want to watch once and then dive straight in and and learn physically, learn hands-on and that's available too. So that was how I learned, straight into it. Thank you for joining us today, Colleen. We got you on because Jim sent us a 30 day email for all new franchisees and you sent a really nice email saying you're very happy with the business and stuff like that. And he always forwards me those emails to, to contact people to, to get on the podcast to, to chat about your journey so far. So do you want to first start a bit about what were you doing prior to Jim's dog wash and how's the first month been? Uh, so prior to this, I was a service department manager for a golf cart wholesaler. And yeah, I used to look after the on-road service technicians and where they went and their schedule and everything. And yeah, I guess that's really quite been quite helpful with scheduling my own days and where I'm going with all the different locations. But yeah, I've really enjoyed my first month. It's been a challenge. It's been something different, but I really enjoyed it. What's been the challenge then for you in the first month? Has it just been the transition from employee to running your own business or what's it been for you? Yeah, I think it's finding that balance between getting out there and and getting the appointments and filling your day versus also having time for administration stuff as well and just balancing that out. But I guess moving from working for an employee to then running your own business, there's always that worry factor that you're not going to get the bookings and am I going to have a full day? And the first week or so was a bit worrying, but quite frankly, I filled up really quickly. That's great to hear. And I was going to say as well, what, why did you choose Jim's Dog Watch? What were you looking at? What was the, the reason for, for looking at doing your own business originally? I wanted to have a little bit more autonomy over what I did and, you know, the time frames of my work. Uh, I wanted to be able to be there for my daughter for a transition to kindergarten class because I can't do that with a nine to five. Yeah. So now I don't book my clients on a Wednesday until about 11 and I'm there to take her to big school and and then I still fill up the rest of my day after I drop her at daycare. So that was a big draw card for me and, and just being able to balance work and life it's it is tricky but as long as you find that balance it actually works a lot better for me than doing a nine to five and why Jim's dog wash for you now obviously you have to be a dog person to do, to want to do it so how what was it was that the thing for you just send want to work with dogs that sounds like it's for me or what what you looking at as well I spent a bit of time looking into it. I definitely wanted to work with dogs and have something that was able to be flexible and out of an office environment and mobile grooming kind of just went, oh, okay, I'm going to look into this. This looks like it could work for me. And the more I looked into it and the more I looked into the gyms group dog wash, it just seemed really supportive. You know, you've got the backing of the head office and the call center. You've got your FSO there for you if you need any help. We have a group chat. So when something happens, you know, I'm just, I reach out and I'm like, I need help. Who's in the area? Who can swing by? And you know what? The whole group have been so friendly and so helpful. It was that. It was it was the support network. It's not just me standing on my own, running my own business. Yes, it is. But in the background, you still have a support network, which was a real big draw card for me. That's great to hear. And I was going to say about the training then. So you're coming from a completely unrelated field to this. It could be quite daunting. You're like, I want to work with dogs. But then you got you see, you might see stuff on YouTube and see these professional groomers that have been doing for many years and it can be quite intimidating. So how did the training, how was the training process for you in getting to you a stage where you can well, operate yourself? Yeah, I really appreciated the the twofold training. You know, for starters, I'm coming in to run my own franchise. You know, how do you do that? You get yeah. four days down in Melbourne to do training on that, which was really great. And then the two weeks on job training with your trainer out in the field in your own trailer so that you're familiar with all your own equipment. That was really great. I do have a little bit of experience because I have a husky of my own. So okay. a lot of that helps. <laughs> That definitely helped. But yeah, the training was great. And my trainer, even though that's done now, she's still there if I need her. I just shoot her a message or ask her, how do I do this? And, you know, she's been great. So there's there's all support there. And where now, we just have interest. Where does someone start it? So you're there day one. Like, is there something where you're just watching him do it or they're explaining to you about different equipment? Well, what's the actual the training process for that two weeks? Or how do you how do you learn in that period? So 
I think it really depends on the person. I'm a very take life by the horn situation. That That's me, you know. So I'm like, yeah, if I'm going to learn it, I'm going to watch once and then I need to get in and do it. So I very much took that as how I was going to run my training and, and my trainer was the same. She said, yep, go for it. She was right beside me for the first day or two until she felt that I was comf- like that I needed to then have a go on my own. So she'd just step outside the door. She's still within earshot. She's still within sight of me. And she kind of just let me go and learn how to do things myself. And I asked questions and she helped and I had her double check at the end to make sure the groom was all nice. And yeah, it was really great. So I think some people need to watch a bit longer and that's available to you. Some people want to watch once and then dive straight in and and learn physically, learn hands-on and that's Mm -hmm. available too. So that was how I learned straight into it. (laughs) And from a customer service experience, should I talk about, you know, from your experience, what's good customer service and, and how do you operate your business for that? Communication is the biggest thing. It is the in capital letters of customer service. And I've come from years of office jobs in customer service. And I think if a customer sees that your pricing is increased because the dog is matted, well, why? And then I explain it to them and I explain, this is why it hurts the dog when they're matted and et cetera. And this is how it ha- can happen. This is how to avoid it, et cetera. So I've had a lot of great feedback from my customers that just the extra time I take to communicate with them as to what's happening. And, you know, if I find a matted ear, I'm stop and I message, and I'm like, just letting you know, I might need to shave this ear off for this reason. And, and they're okay with it you know so I think communication has been the biggest key I have templates on my phone I send out a message the night before every appointment hey it's Colleen from Jim's dog wash just checking in we've got our appointment tomorrow and I get back so that they're oh yes that's right yep yep absolutely <laughs> helps um as a little reminder yeah it sounds so simple but a lot of people don't do it but you do like as a customer like myself like you just appreciate as you said you get that text message before someone's coming in even post job, if there's something wrong, just a little thing, but it's such a big difference. And I just wish more people would do what you did because it's such a, even though it sounds simple, it sounds obvious to people, that's what you do in a business. A lot of people don't. No, I think the biggest thing that customers appreciate is just being remembered as well. So I take the time after my appointments or during or whenever I can to note down in brackets the dog's name. So if I'm turning up to, you know, my lovely customer Maria this morning and she's got her little older dog, Karina, I'd say, hey, how you doing? And how's Karina today? And they just think, oh, I'm special to you. You remembered me. How did you remember me? You know, I don't need to know that I took all of these notes, but <laughs> it's it's a personal touch. It just, they're not just a customer. They're a friend and they're a customer as well. And I take care of the dogs because I take the time to remember. Absolutely. And the dogs, people forget more. People should, if you've got a dog, you know it's your baby, right? So um, if someone, you know, it's a exactly. member of your family, isn't it? So. Exactly. Let me come and help you with your fur baby. You look after your skin babies and I'll take care of the fur babies. Yeah. <laughs> how many jobs roughly um, a day are you doing or how much? Are you, how are you scheduling your week? So I still have my kids to drop off in the morning um, at 8.30. So I schedule my first, if they're local, I schedule them at 9. If they're a little further out, it's 9.30. And then I just go from there. I try to take my last at like 4.30 sort of thing because it's winter and it's getting darker. Yeah. Some customers don't get home until late and they're not available when I'm available. So I do offer later appointments and then I just let them know that, you know, it's fully heated, it's fully enclosed, it's like a little sauna in there once we start getting going. So winter's not an issue for that sort of reason. But yeah, I I tend to do between, I still go nine to five really. And sometimes I'm home by 5.30 or six o'clock and still works for me. That's basically what I was doing hours wise before in an office. And what do your kids think about your new career? Oh, they love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So do my fur babies who accost me at the door every time I get home of an afternoon. <laughs> so you said you got a husky? Well, you have two I here. Yeah. I have a Jack Russell and a husky. Ah, yeah. even small. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my kids are constantly wanting to chuck sick days at school so they can come out with me. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And how do they notice the change in you maybe overall? Like, are you a bit more happy you think doing this or about the same? Or how's the, how's the difference for you being that way? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I I think I'm probably a little bit the same to start with. I mean, I'm only, you know, five weeks into it at this point, out of my own. But just being able to come home, do a quick clean, and then that's it. And I'm I make a point of stopping and I wait till after bedtime to do any computer work because then, you know, they still need their mum as well. Um, and that seems to work for us. 
That's great. And I was going to say, you're happy with the income level as well so far? You've just started, but you're happy with what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, I am actually. It definitely goes back to what I said earlier about the worry factor, you know, yeah. like, oh, am I going to have enough bookings? Am I going to, you know, be able to bring the money in that I need to support my family? And so far, it's been spot on. It's been great. I'm working on the pay for work guarantee at the moment, which is again supportive from Jim's group and from my franchisor. And it's really, it's really been fantastic. I've been meeting that mark every week and it's been well, great. been meeting the mark. Oh, that's fantastic. Almost, almost, almost meeting the mark okay. every week. Yeah. Some yeah. weeks, yeah. Yes, over and above and other weeks, tiny bit under, but altogether on an average, I've been getting them. Yeah, nice. Uh, that was good because obviously the pay for guarantee. Um, are you offering free services or discounts for yours or which one are you doing? Yeah, I had free service that I, free services I was offering in May and and I got to a point, I'll be honest, I got to a point where the last week of May I had to turn my leads off because I was just, I was fully booked, you That's know, great. and I, I, I couldn't offer any more at that point. So I I wanted to, uh, I was getting to a point where I was booked up three weeks in advance and customers were getting a bit upset with that, which is understandable. So I opted to turn my leads off for a week just to bring my lead times down, just to, you know, have that better customer service for my incoming customers. Yeah, and you should hopefully... The repeat bookings, obviously, so you're only five weeks in, but I think it's every month or two months people get... I've already had some repeats start coming through today, actually, this week. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, Yeah, that's that's great. That means you can get off the... um, Well, you won't need the pay for a guarantee once those repeats start booking in and you'll be flat out not knowing what to do before the excess work and referrals that come your way. Honestly, I'm not even worried about that anymore. Five weeks in and I've lost that worry factor because I've already got bookings into August. That's great. That's great. Yeah. 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 Well, and going into the business, is there something like knowing that you know now that you'd advise maybe someone looking at maybe doing what you've done? Is there any advice? Like, is it more about, is there anything that you found that would help someone else in regards to um, what you've been doing? I would simply say just be informed. Yeah. You know, Jim's group offers a lot of opportunity to be informed about what it entails and what you need to get started. I do have customers that have said to me, oh, how do you go with this? How does it work? And and one young girl was very, very keen, but unfortunately didn't have driver's license. So yeah. she's got to sort that out for us. But, you know, you get the opportunity to have a Zoom meeting with a, someone from head office and ask them what questions you need. And then you've got a one-on-one moody meeting with them again. And like, there's plenty of opportunity to get information and, and get answers for the questions you have before you start. And I really appreciated that. And that's why I chose Jim's group. And from a customer's point of view, um, I was going to say aggressive dogs. A lot of people might say, yeah, my dog's a bit aggressive or has had a bad experience before. Can you help? Mm-hmm. So have you had that experience yet so far? I only know you're early on. And how do you go about dealing with those type of um, dogs? So I have been bitten on my finger already. Yeah. And it was because the dog was heavily matted, very close to the skin. And obviously trying to shave that out can be quite uncomfortable for the dog. Talking to them reassuring in a reassuring voice not getting upset yourself and obviously being my own business I'm in a position where I can say okay I have to stop I don't just walk away like I've been in contact with that customer again and I've said to her you know the recommendation is to see the vet and see about getting the dog sedated so that we can shave um, the dog down while it's asleep and it's more comfortable for them so I have had people say oh I've got an aggressive dog I'm like that's okay let's book an appointment I'll come out and we'll see how we go. If it doesn't look like it's going to work, then that's okay. We just call it a day. And now advising on, oh, sorry, that's good advice. Yeah. And I was going to say the um, other one I had for you is about advising on hairstyles. Because obviously you there's certain customers who might want something to look a certain way, but you know it might look a different way. So how do you go about advising them on that or how do you make those recommendations? I will often ask the customer, do you have a photo of your dog when you loved the look of it? Like when you loved their groom, you know, what what is it that you're looking for? Exactly. And if it's more an explanation, I say, okay, do you have a photo from that time that you could show me and text it to me and I'll work from that. I have had customers with a Pomeranian ask for a lion cut, (laughs) like the lion cut big mane and the the puppy legs and and, um, I'll accommodate wherever I possibly can and they were happy in the end anyway. (laughs) I've got two Shih Tzus, so we get a whole different bunch of cuts as well. They get the lion cut as well sometimes, those Shih Tzus. So I know I'm familiar with that. I was going to say as well, the um, products that you use, now it's always interesting to people, what sort of products, like is there particular types of shampoos or is there any sort of, obviously they're all animal friendly, but like what brands or is there anything people should consider when it comes to the um, shampoo? Is there much of a difference actually even at all? It very much depends on the the skin and the coat of the dog. 
we do have I use pet petway pet care products yep. and they've been great so far they've got uh, a gentle wash for sensitive skin as well and I've used that on a few dogs with sensitive skin or eczema and things and it seems to you know work quite well you obviously you know you're not restricted as to what products you can use as long mm-hmm. as they're animal safe products some customers have requested Malaseb, which is, you know, a medicated shampoo for dogs with specific skin problems. If they don't have it themselves to use, and, and obviously you've got to keep in mind that if they say, oh, I've got this bottle here, I always check the date. Make sure it's still, I'll ask them to check the date before I come out. But if not, then yes, you can have all these different types of shampoos. But quite frankly, just the everyday I've been using has been quite good, having good results. Yeah. And the doggy colognes. I love the doggy colognes. Yeah, the client have been said, yeah. I've seen, um, I think Hannah and Kloster and in Sarah Shade, I saw a blueberry facial they were giving a dog. I've seen a few things I didn't even know that existed. Yes, I'm looking forward to getting into the blueberry facials. I'm actually hoping to do a little, um, you know, July giveaway with the blueberry facial. Yeah, so, yeah. What's your yeah. Facebook page? So what can people follow? Sh- get on, on- uh, Jim's Dog Wash Gladswood Hills. There we go. Facebook. Each, yes. <laughs> and the dog cologne as well. So that's a big thing now, is it? Post, post cream, post wash people. Yeah. So once they're fully washed and fully dry, um, we spritz on a little doggy cologne. It's like that new car smell, but it's a new dog smell. <laughs> and I like to put on the, I have a girly girl one, which is very yeah. florally for the girls and coconut. Um, it's like co- coconut cabana or something for the boys. They smell like a pina colada. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the baby, baby powder one. And yeah. yeah. And they, I've tested them on my dogs and they last a good two weeks, two to three weeks, and my dogs still smell great. So I love those. (laughs) I was going to say as well, the trailers themselves, you mentioned before, obviously the trailers, everyone thinks, is it cold? Is it damp? Or is it going to be warm enough? Is it cold water? Do you know what I mean? Just talk about the trailers themselves and and how comfortable it is for the the dog. So I I obviously started my training when it was still a bit warmer. Mm. And then I've gotten right into doing it on my own during the colder months now. So this last month. It gets foggy in there. It gets so toasty warm. As long as I, if there's a cold breeze, I'll shut the doors um, and the customers are okay. If they question it, I let them know why. And I just say, I'm just going to close the door because that cold breeze with your dog that's wet, it's not going to be comfortable. We close the door and the, there's a great heater. The The water is warm. You can set temperatures. You, you check it and they end up, some of my dogs end up like steaming they're just so nice and toasty warm when they come out of the bath um and then the dry is heated as well so they get a, a warm bath and a warm dry down yeah and i can't complain like i don't wear my jacket when i'm working because it's so toasty in there you don't need it and how do you find work in the trailer itself because it can be it is a, it is a confined space so how do you go deal with that um i'm pretty happy with it yeah i don't really have an issue with it it's um the windows help as well yeah because um i've got in the the fleet trailer that I have I've got the nice long windows on both sides um, and the one at the front as well and obviously the doors got the barn door so you can open the top if you need to but no I, I never seem to feel claustrophobic or anything like yeah. that it's quite cool in there yeah, yeah I, know, I know the tries pretty well because we've got them at our head office there and it's it, the great thing about those tries that people might not know is that a lot of the changes to the trailer design have been all done based on franchisee suggestions so mm-hmm. there's been a heap of changes to that trailer over the years just with different things where the plugins are and stuff like that and it's a really good trailer that's suited for the franchisee it's not yeah. a stock standard design it's being changed all the time and it's a really really good trailer they look fantastic as well and how'd you go about driving with the trailer because it can be quite daunting sometimes for people so how, how is that i can't complain i'm a truck driver's daughter uh, mate i could reverse <laughs> into blind spots no problem <laughs> ah there you go some people for the opposite so i'm glad to hear that you had yeah. with them as well well you know what when you start your franchise they offer you training on how to yeah. reverse as well so that's right there but I've often had customers, you know, say to me, oh, you can just drive in if you like. And I'm like, well, I prefer to reverse in because then I can drive out into the street. And they'll stand back and watch and then applaud me at the end of it. They're like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've had a couple of giggles with some customers about that too. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. And with your business, what's your plan? Do you just want to get to the regular business, work around your family, or do you plan on expanding it? Or what do you want to do with your with your franchise? Oh, it's all a bit too new at the moment. I'm just looking for flexibility with my family and just to, you know, build a great customer base and see where it takes me. We've already got it nearly, you know, five weeks and you're nearly there already. So well done. Yeah, thank you. No worries. Well, Colleen, thank you very much for joining us today on the podcast. Um, yeah, as we said at the start, Jim said 30 day emails all new franchisees and you responded with a nice email. And it was great to hear your success already. So it's a really good one and hopefully good motivation for people to maybe do what you are doing. And if they've got a family as well, how can work around them. So we appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. Thanks.
Thank you for listening to the episode of the Gyms Podcast. If you want to learn more about the Gyms Group, head to gyms.net or call us on 131 546 Australia or 0800 454 654 New Zealand. And if you did like the episode as well, please make sure you leave a review or a comment or a thumbs up or a comment on the video as well. We appreciate your support. And until next episode, we hope you have a great week.